Hello, welcome to lesson four of practical geography or map work. Objectives of the lesson. By the end of the lesson, learners will be able to one, identify escarpments represented by contour lines, and two, differentiate between a cone or a saddle and a pass. Escarpment. Escarpment is a mountain or a highland with steep slope at one side and gentle slope on another side. So first, we know that this is a mountain or a highland because we know that the calibration is from 100 to 800. 800 because this contour is 600. And this contour, though it is not having a number, is going to be 700. And there is a last contour in it, which is what? 800. And the contour interval is what? 100. We have also been introduced to contour lines indicating steep slope and contour lines indicating gentle slope. So as you can see, this mountain is having two sides. And that is what makes it to be an escarpment. Because one side, which is this area, is steep because the contour lines are closer to themselves there. And this side is gentle because the contour lines are far apart. Let us use cross section to indicate this or to indicate the feature or features of escarpment. First, you draw your horizontal line to cut across all the contours. And this horizontal line must always go through the last contour or the middle contour. Then you draw your vertical line like this at the left side, and then another vertical line at the right side. Very good. After that, then you mark the vertical side at the left side according to the calibration of the contour. So we know from 100 to 800. So you start 100, 200, 300, then 400, 500, 600, 700, and the last contour, 800. You come to the right side and do the markings again. So from 100 to 700, the last is 800. Then the next step, you trace all the contours on the horizontal line always on the horizontal line to the end of the marking. So you end at the marking 100. The one contour has been jumped, but we'll come back to read that is contour 200 has been jumped, but we will come back very good. We come back to 200. Then the next is 400 and you move to 500. The next contour 600 and 700 and the last contour is 800. So you end at 800. Now, this is the left side. You are done at the left side. Then you move to the right side. So, okay, we start from here. 100. So mark the 100. 200. This is 300. 400. 500. The next one is 600. So end at 600. 700. Then you move to the last one, 800. The lines are closer, indicating that this side is going to give you a pattern which is almost standing upright. And this part is going to give you a pattern which is gentle sloping because there are spaces in between the lines. So this side will be stiff sloping and this side will be gentle sloping. So this is an escarpment. So you trace your curve. So an escarpment is a mountain with two different sides. One side is steep sloping and the other side is gentle sloping. Now, the definition says that an escarpment is a mountain or a highland with one side being steep and the other side being gentle. So let's study this contour very well. We can see that this contour is a mountain and then it is also having 
two sides. Look at this area. You see that this contour is having wider margin, or there is a space in this contour that is contour 100, 200, 300, and 400. Then from 500 above, you see that the contour lines are getting closer to themselves. Yes? So you are going to have a mountain with one side being gentle and another side being and another side being steep. So from our previous cross section lesson, I think you should be able to look at this contour and imagine how this escarpment is going to look like. So let's prove this by using the cross section. So you draw the horizontal line again to cut across all the contours. Then you draw your vertical line at one side and another vertical line at the other side. That is the right side. Then you mark them according to the calibration of the contour. So from the lowest to the highest. So the lowest contour is 100. So the 100 always starts. So you have 100 and the highest is 800. Very good. You do it at the left side and then you come to the right side. Again, from 100 to 800. So what contour is this? Contour 100. Because this side is equal to 100. So all this contour is 100. They have equal height of 100. Then what contour is this? 200. You trace it to 200 here. So the whole of this contour is 200. Because they have equal size of 200 all over this contour. This contour is 300, so you trace it to 300. Then the next contour, 400. Very good, 400, 500, so we are on 600. You can see that over here, you see that there is a change in the distance between the lines. You see that the lines are now getting closer because the contour lines here are closer to themselves. So this is also and the scaffolding. You are done at the left side, then you move to the right side. Again, 800. You end here, 800. You trace it to 700. Very good. So someone may still ask, these contours are not having calibration. Yes, but in our previous lesson, we have indicated that all the contours must not necessarily have numbers but you use the contour interval to know their numbers. Because if this is 100, and this is 200, this is 300, this is 400, the next one definitely is going to be 500, because all the contours are having a difference of 100. We are on contour 400, then we move to 300. So you trace 300 to contour 300, 200, the last contour is 100. Very good. So you can see the spaces between the lines here. So as you can see, these lines here are having space than the lines here. So this area is going to give you a gentle sloping pattern and then steep sloping pattern over here. So steep sloping pattern and then gentle sloping pattern. This is also an escarpment. So, an escarpment can be in two forms. One form can be two sides, where one side of the mountain is steep sloping, while the other side is gentle sloping. You can also have an escarpment where, when you are climbing the mountain, you climb it in a very gentle slope, then when you get to a point of the mountain, you get a steep slope. Yes, it is also an escarpment because one side is steep and the other side is gentle sloping. This is an escarpment. So as you can see, this area is gentle sloping and then when you get to this side, you see that this side is steep sloping. An example is clear over here too, gentle sloping. When you get to this place, you see steep sloping. The same pattern applies here gentle sloping here, and then steep sloping. The same way, gentle sloping, and then steep sloping. Let's look at a 
cool or a saddle. A cool or a saddle can be a pack. So we will know the difference as we continue. A cool or a saddle is the lowest point between two highlands or the lowest point of a ridge. So when you study this contour carefully, you realize that, yes, this is a mountain because the calibration is from the lowest to the highest. This area is going to be the lowest point in the definition over here. So let us use cross-section again to explain a cord or a saddle. So you draw your horizontal line again to cut across all the contours. And I said that the horizontal line must not escape the last contours. That is this and this. So you draw your vertical line at the left side and then another vertical line at the right side. Then you calibrate it according to the calibration of the contour. So the lowest is 100 and the highest is 500. So this is 100, 200, 300, 400, and 500. So you trace them carefully. So you have traced the 100, you hit the 100, over here 200, then 300, you come to 400. And then 500, very good. Another 500 here. All that you need to do is to get the markings right and then just trace the contours. Just trace the contours to the marking. That is all. So this is 400. You just trace it to the 400. It's very simple, but you need to study it carefully to understand the principles. So what contour is this? 400, you trace it to 400. 500, you trace it to 500. Again, what contour is this? 500, you trace it to 500. Now, what contour is this? 400, you trace it to 400. So, all that you are supposed to do is just to draw your line, to cut across all the contours. You get your markings. The markings over here will be always from the lowest to the highest according to the calibration of the contour. So what contour are we? 300, you trace it to 300. Then 200, you trace it to 200. And then the last contour, 100. So now we are coming to trace the pattern. And then we understand a cord or a saddle. Very good. It ends at 100. So let's trace it carefully. You trace it at the end of the line. Very good. Come down over here. You move. Again, you move up, you come down. Very good. So this point is referred to as a cord or a saddle. So as you can see, it is the lowest land between two highlands. So this is a highland, this is a highland, and this is the lowest point. So this is a cord or a saddle. So now, this is how a cord or a saddle looks like. So it is a low land between two highlands. So this is one highland, this is another highland. So the low land is referred to as a cord or a saddle. Now, this same cord or saddle changes to path. What happens? before it becomes a path. It becomes a path when a road has been constructed between this point, the lowest point. So anytime there is any form of transportation at the cold or the saddle, the name changes to path. So we need to take note of this. Very good. So as you can see here, it means a car can pass here it means a road has been constructed. So the name changes from coal to path. Or the name changes from coal or saddle to path. So you can see clearly, this is a coal or a saddle. So the lowest point over here is a coal or a saddle. So this is also a coal or a saddle. This is also a coal or a saddle. Just like the saddle of a horse. So on the horse, where you sit, 
is referred to as the saddle. Whenever a road, a footpath, or a railway line has been constructed at the hole or the saddle, the name changes to path. Thank you very much. You visit Educare and Kids on YouTube for more videos. See you in lesson.